Shake Table Lab by Kate Suh. I started building my tower by adding the base and forming the walls of the tower. My rough sketch was used for reference. Cross braces were very important. A single straw was too short to use as a cross brace, so I connected two straws and trimmed off the excess. In the previous slide, you saw that I had already finished the structure of the first story. This is the first story when I had just finished putting paper flooring on it. In the previous slide, you probably saw that I had already formed the basic walls of the second floor. In this picture, I had just finished all the cross braces and secured them with tape. Here, I had just finished putting on the finishing touches, such as the sign, the balcony, and flooring on the second story. I had one extra straw, so I used that to build a sturdier floor on the first floor. I eventually ended up tearing off the balcony. The height of my first story was 19 centimeters. The height of my second story was also 19 centimeters. My first test was to put one sandbag on each floor and then add an additional sandbag if the previous test worked. We strengthened the structure with cross braces. Cross braces were important because they kept the structure from bending, tilting, and helped the structure maintain the correct shape. With my last straw, I strengthened the first floor. Without that straw, my paper would have broken and torn, leaving my sandbags nowhere to sit. At first, my first floor was definitely the strongest. Pick one. I put a lot of time into making strong cross braces, and my paper flooring was supported with a straw. When I was being foolish one day, I put 17 sandbags on my tower, and it crashed beyond repair. The straw was bent, my structure tilted, and there was no way I could ever restore the tower. Now my second floor is slightly stronger. Pick two. I put the same amount of work into it as the first floor, and even though the floor isn't as supportive, the straw supporting it didn't crack. At first, my first floor was definitely the strongest. I put a lot of time into making strong cross braces, and my paper flooring was supported with a straw. As I mentioned before, I crashed my tower, but my second floor is also weak in some ways. The weight on the second floor will make the tower sway, so then the whole tower would sway. Also, there are no straws on the second floor supporting the paper. Tape was a crucial material that was used to attach straws, attach cross braces, make corners, make floors, and attach the building onto the base plate. There were many different methods of using tape, and we used a fat and a skinny kind. If I had five extra straws, I would have added a pole in the middle of the tower. I originally came up with the idea because I wanted to mimic the soundpost in a violin. The soundpost absorbs shock and makes the music sound better and serves other useful purposes. Other people had the same idea, and I decided to add one if I had an extra straw after the cross braces and the general frame was built. However, that straw was used to support the paper floor so that the sandbags would have had a stronger place to sit. I would use the rest of the extra straws to support the second and first story. Hi guys, this is Kate, and this is my Shake Table interview, so I really like this um, lab because I love expressing my creative side, and also, if I had to change anything about what I did, I would add a pole to act like a sound post, and um, so that it can absorb shock better, and... Also, I wouldn't have tested it till it broke before it broke on the shake table. That probably would have gotten me a, a better score. And also, I really love this project. So, And I also learned about um, structures and how earthquakes 
impact them and some of the past solutions to the earthquake problem. So I learned about cross braces and how they help. So bye. During the tower lab day, we put a sensor on my tower that acted as a seismograph. These were my major earthquake seismograph readings. The x-axis, the green line, represents the strongest force in the P waves. P waves are push-pull waves that move forward and back. The y-axis, the orange line, represents the S waves. The z-axis represents my tower bouncing and wobbling. Thanks for watching!